You're welcome to Open Heaven's Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God. I'm Salam Manager Haruna, your host. We are glad to have you. Hello, good day, and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heaven is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary intends to bring insight to God's word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Saturday, the 6th day of July 2024, and our topic for today is Divine Setup. Let us pray. Our Father, we give you thanks. We worship your name, King of Glory. We thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the breath in our nostrils. Thank you for sound health and sound mind. Thank you for the battles you fight for us. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. We say receive our thanks in Jesus' name. One more time we've gathered before you again. Lord, we ask that you would fill us with the wisdom of your word till we overflow. Let your word today be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 18. Genesis chapter 22 verse 18 reads, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Genesis chapter 22 verse 18. Our text for today is from the book of 1 Kings chapter 3, would be reading verse 4 to verse 15. 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 4 to 15 reads, And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hadst given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hadst made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hadst chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hath asked riches for thyself, nor hath asked the life of thine enemies, but hath asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honour, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways, to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem, and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Once again, our topic for today is divine setup. And in the body of today's devotional, our Father and the Lord says to us, that the first time I read 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 4 to 15, after being born again, I thought to myself, how did Solomon think of offering God a thousand burnt offerings? This made me carry out a background check, and I discovered a secret. In 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 24 to 25, 
the Bible tells us that God loved Solomon as soon as he was born. His father named him Solomon, but God named him Jedidiah, meaning beloved of the Lord. Because God loved Solomon, he wanted an opportunity to bless him in a way that nobody would be able to query him. So he set him up by putting it in his heart to do something nobody had ever done before. That way, he also could do for Solomon what he had never done for anyone before. When I joined RCCG in 1973, when there was any need in the church, they would ask only the children of God to wait behind. In those days, children of God meant those that are truly born again and know it. One day, my wife and I waited behind and the general superintendent said, we have an urgent need that must be met this week. Every one of you should go and close your bank accounts and bring whatever money you have there to the church. On Monday, my wife and I closed our savings account and took the money to church. The following Sunday, the general superintendent said again that the children of God should wait behind. We waited. He announced that the need had been met and we all rejoiced. Then he asked the question, how many of you closed your accounts as I instructed? My wife and I raised our hands and when we looked around, no other hand was raised. Immediately, I thought to myself, I hope I am not going crazy with this Christianity of mine. Then God spoke to me, son, you are not mad. I am allowing you to do what others have not done so that when I take you to where I am taking you, nobody will be able to query me. The rest is history. It was a divine setup. When God places it in your heart to give him something, he is only setting you up for greatness. If you obey, you will be rejoicing later in future. But if you disobey, you will have missed a miracle. Whether you give or not, God has numerous ways to meet his need. The one who is really in need is you. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today once more is divine set up. You would agree with me, our Father and the Lord always tells us that in this kingdom, nothing goes for nothing. There is nothing that you see, even if it is said to be free, that is actually free. It may be said to be free only because someone had actually paid for it already. Hallelujah! This explains why even when God desired and intended to bless Solomon, he had to set him up for that blessing. He had to put in his heart to do something that no one had done before so that he could also bless him in a way that no one had been blessed before. Hallelujah! When you take a look at our memory verse for today from the book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 18, scripture tells us there, the Lord speaking, that, And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. However, if you read the preceding verses, you would notice that this only came after Abraham obeyed God's instruction to sacrifice his son Isaac. You would see the instruction in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. Scripture tells us, And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac. God was very specific. He said, Whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Before that time, there was no record of anyone giving this level of sacrifice in obedience to God. But Abraham obeyed, even though Isaac was his only son and he was supposed to be the child of the covenant. This is something that many people will not do. It was unimaginable. In fact, if it were to be today, many will cast and bind that spirit. However, the next verse tells us, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. There was no record of him even daring to tell his wife about what God had told him. She probably would have stood in the way of his obedience. Scripture tells us, And he clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, 
and went unto the place of which God had told him. We know the rest of the story. Abraham, I believe in his heart, had already offered Isaac up. It was only the physical manifestation that was left. And God could see his heart as he raised that knife up to sacrifice his son Isaac. Scripture tells us in Genesis chapter 22 verse 10 that, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Then scripture tells us in verse 11 that the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Verse 12, And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Hallelujah. Then from verse 15 to verse 18, we see the blessing of the Lord. Scripture tells us, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Because God instructed him, and he dared to do that which no one else would do. Sometimes we are praying to God and asking, Lord, open doors for me, Lord, give me a breakthrough. Lord, please answer my call. Give me that miracle. Give me that testimony. But his response could be just a simple instruction. Do this or do that. Sometimes those instructions may sound too heavy that we will begin to pretend as though we did not even hear it, hoping that he will say something else. I remember while rounding up my national youth service, with many of the uncertainties that many young people face around that time, God placed it on my heart to do something very sacrificial for the next one year. It was quite tough, but he helped me obey. And when I see the results of that obedience, to this very day, all I can say is, Father, I am grateful. We are told in today's study that when God places it in your heart to give him something, he is only setting you up for greatness. So many people would begin to ask, what does God want to do with the money? Is it really God who is using it? How will you know how the money would be expended? What God is interested in is your obedience. And we are told in today's study that if you obey, you will be rejoicing later in future. But if you disobey, you will have missed a miracle. And this could be a life-changing, life-transforming miracle. I would like us at this point to bow our heads and ask the Lord would say, Father, Please help me not to miss your divine setup for my greatness in Jesus' name. Why not call upon the Lord today? Say, Father, please help me. Help me not to give excuses that will excuse me out of the greatness you have in store for me. Ask the Lord today for the grace to obey his instructions when they come, that he will help us to partner with him in this divine setup. If God is desiring to set you up for greatness and you are not partnering with him, there will be no way it would be possible. Ask the Lord today, say, Father, please help me to comply with you. Grant unto me an obedient and understanding heart. His instructions that come to us many times could be tests that we should take so we can move on to our next levels. Ask the Lord today that we will not fail when those tests come in the name of Jesus. Greedy and selfish believers are those who are not willing to sacrifice anything for that which God has for them. All they want is to take, take, receive, collect. They want more and more for themselves only. Ask the Lord today for the grace to be selfless in our work with Him and to work with Him with our whole hearts. So many people refuse to obey because they think they have alternatives. Ask the Lord today that He would be our one and only source and option in the name of Jesus. Begin to thank the Lord, appreciate Him and give Him thanks for answers to prayers. Lord, we are grateful. Father, receive all our thanks. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this great word you have brought to us today. 
Thank you because you have opened our eyes to understand that we need to partner with you for this divine setup. We ask, O Lord, that you would help us that if there be any way where we may have not been cooperating in the past, you would help us from this day to do better. Please help us, Lord, not to walk against your will for greatness for us. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Proverbs chapter 24 down to chapter 26. We also want to thank you and appreciate you for making our time to join us today again. God bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 28 of our Open Heavens devotional. We'll be singing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. As you go for today, cooperate and enjoy the divine setup of the Lord. See you at the top. God bless you and bye for now. I believe today's devotional blessed you. We are always glad to hear from you. So leave us a comment. Let us know how this has blessed you. Also remember to follow us on all our social media handles to get more like this. You can share this with someone to bless them too. We gladly look forward to seeing you tomorrow again. Have a fulfilling day ahead. God bless you.